Station. Fresh up your world, your thought, your idea with us every day, Monday to Friday from 7.30 to 8 a.m. I'm Nira Shamali Saklamina. And I'm Nina Tumber City. It's Tuesday, the 30th of July, and we're still on the Sunday elections in Cambodia as the United States has voiced concern on Monday about reports of irregularities and called for a credible investigation. Well, we urge all parties and their supporters to continue to act in an orderly and peaceful manner in the post-election period, according to the State Department spokeswoman Jen Psaki. The Cambodian opposition resulted the, rejected the results of the polls, even though it made significant gains, saying it had been robbed of victory over strongman Premier Hun Sen. We are concerned by numerous reported irregularities in the electoral process, Saki said, adding that Washington had long called on Phnom Penh to address systematic flaws such as problems in the voter registry and unequal access to the media. We call for a transparent and full investigation of all credible reports of irregularities, Saki told reporters. It was the worst election result for Cambodia's ruling party since 1998, after the opposition was emboldened by the return from exile of its leader, Sam Rainsy, even though he was barred from running. Hun Sen's Cambodian uh, People's Party, or CPP, announced late Sunday it had taken an estimated 68 out of 123 seats in the lower house against an increased 55 for the Cambodia National Rescue Party, or the CNRP. Saki said, we believe that, of course, the Cambodian people should have confidence in the outcome of the election. Now let's shift our attention from Cambodia to Thailand as yes. Thailand right now is facing another critical situation, especially uh, along the um, mm -hmm. Got Summit area. Mm -hmm. As Thai authorities yesterday feared that the entire tourist island of Got Summit in Rayong would be affected by the Saturday's oil spills. The islands of Ao Prao or Prao Bay is being closed for three days to permit a cleanup of spilled crude oil that has washed ashore. Gossamet was yesterday declared a marine disaster area, according to Rayong Governor Wittit Chat Pai Sit, who said action was being taken to prevent the leak oil from spreading from Ao Prao to other beaches on the island. He said that the spill is definitely having an impact on the environment, but so far, there are no reports on any death of marine animals yet. It is expected to take about 15 days to restore the polluted beach of Ao Prao, according to Sukmet Sai Tong, chief of the Lam Ya Summit Islands National Park. He said about 500 officials from the Pollution Control Department, Department of Environment Quality Promotion, petrochemical firm PTT Global Chemical, from whose pipeline the oil leak, and those sent by the Rayong Provincial Governor were cleaning up oil that had washed ashore. Film from the floating crude oil has spread over 8 kilometers west of the Ao Prao on the western coast of Summit and about 400 meters in the bay, according to him. The Stop Global Warming Association yesterday has also asked the government to demand compensation from PTT for allegedly causing damage to the country's natural resources and the environment. It would take legal actions by itself if the government failed to do so according to the association's representatives. Got Summit is about three kilometers off the coast of Rayong. It is one of a popular getaway for Bangkok residents, and the island attracts about one million visitors a year, mostly on the weekends. It is also known for its quieter scene and scene beach. Our prow is now blackened by waves but of oil lapping on the shore. The leak reportedly struck on an offshore pipeline belonging to PTT Global Chemical on Saturday morning, releasing about 50,000 liters of crude oil into the Gulf of Thailand. The pipe is about 20 kilometers off Rayong's coast. Authorities had contained much of the oil spill by Saturday evening. Outer portions evaded the flooding barriers used to try to contain the spill. And according to the Tourism Authority of Thailand's director for Rayong, say that Ao Prao is close to tourists so authorities can clean up the water and beach. Ao Prao is on the west coast of Summit. However, most of the island's hotels and resorts are on the east coast, which has not been affected by the spill.
the Philippine government has decided to extend from August 1st a free visa period for foreign nationals from 151 countries, according to the Department of Foreign Affairs today. Well, according to the department, the foreigners include those from Andorra, Argentina, Bhutan, Botswana. Uh, Colombia, Costa Rica, Denmark, Dominican Republic, Japan, New Zealand, South Africa, United States, and Zimbabwe, among others, could stay in the Philippines for up to 30 days from the previous period of 21 days. The initiative aims to facilitate the entry and stay of foreign nationals who plan to engage in tourism activities or explore the Philippines as an investment destination, it said. DFA Assistant Secretary Jaime Victor Leda of the Office of Counselor Affairs said this move will hopefully encourage more tourists and investors to visit and stay in the Philippines by removing the need for them to report to immigration offices for a stay of up to one month. It will also give them more flexibility in planning and managing their schedules. Qualified foreign nationals who intend to avail of the visa-free privilege only need to present a national passport valid for at least six months beyond the contemplated stay and an onward ticket, he said. Brazil and Israel remain eligible for a 59-day visa-free entry in line with existing bilateral agreements with the Philippines, according to the DFA. And now Indonesia has called on all parties in Egypt to end the violence, restrain themselves and use peaceful constitutional means in seeking solution to the ongoing political impasse in the country. In his official statement, Indonesian Foreign Affairs Minister Martin Natalikawa said yesterday that there is no plans for the using of violence to solve the problem, adding that all parties in Egypt should put forward a spirit of compromise and pay respects to people's rights. However, he said that unless a wise solution that puts forward compromises and reconciliation, situation in Egypt will be worsening. Indonesia pushes international community, including the United Nations, to support and push for the conduct of constitutional reconciliation that fit to what the nation and peoples want in Egypt. After monitoring the ongoing political crisis development in Egypt, Indonesian government last week issued a travel advisory for its citizens planning to travel in Egypt. For Indonesian already stay in Egypt, they were told to stay away from protesting mass crowds and advert from involving in Egyptians' home affairs. The minister said that Indonesian embassy in Egypt has been told to continue monitoring the development situation, taking anticipating steps that include preparations to face worst-case scenario in Egypt and ensure protection for each Indonesian citizen in the country. He added that Indonesian stay in Egypt were told to maintain communications with the embassy to ease protection efforts provided by the embassy. In the recent clashes between supporters of the ousted President Mohamed Morsi and the apparatus, hundreds of people were reportedly killed and political crisis in Egypt occurred early this month when President Morsi, who won democratic elections last year was toppled down by the military and an interim president was appointed to replace Morsi who was put in detention later on. Let's now move to look at East Asia as this next special report is on tensions from historical conflict in that region. Tensions from historical conflict has always been there and appears anywhere around the globe. The sensitive issue is in particular with Northeast Asia surrounding the Korean Peninsula. Regardless of the idea that it hampers regional cooperation in Asia, the future hope to the world's engine of growth. Peace advocators fear that reoccurring nationalism and inflicting actions on the sensitive territorial rows over the DOU, Senkaku and Dokdo Takeshima Islands, which are more than often politically motivated, will create more than just a tit-for-tat diplomacy. Although we tend to focus more on the economic aspects when talking within the Asian region, but the sentiment from historical conflicts that persist can also hinder the economic cooperation and development as well as the growth of the region and also with fears that it may trigger military concentration within the East Asian countries. 
The fifth international NGO history and peace forum held in Seoul this year was mandated to address the fragility of the inter-Korean relations, where the effort to establish trust and peace system is still in a conundrum. It is also the week that marks the 60th anniversary of the Korean War armistice, yet the achievements of peace remains to be afar. But to Professor Kenneth Quinones of Akita International University, Japan, a full-fledged war is very unlikely in the region because East Asia still wants economic prosperity. Since the end of the Cold War in 1990, for the first time in modern East Asian history, all the countries, China, North and South Korea, uh, uh, Japan, all agree on they want three things. They want peace so they can continue to develop their prosperity and they also want political stability. Right. And I think that those goals are preventing war. Despite the 21st century, it appears that East Asia has not gone beyond the post-conflict era from historical times. In addition to that, the situation has been made more complicated by superpower rivalry. With the simmering tension over territorial disputes and sentiment from nationalism, it questions the political will of the parties at stake regarding their determination to find resolution to peace, as they constantly flex their military muscle in a show of tension scare. Professor Catherine Moon from the Wellesley College explains that war no longer appears to be as simple as before. Neither will it appear to be a clear-cut cause like during the World War II in Europe with clear victims, the world against Germany. Um, and the idea that war is something that is good or necessary, one has to, the government or those or the authorities, they have to be able to convince the public that it's necessary. And so we talk about mobilizing a public to support a war. While Asia has been urged to let bygones be bygones, observation reveals that it is a different war trauma experienced in this continent. The task to reconciliation is indeed the toughest but not unachievable, as long as the superpower and its rival for hegemony abstains from giving assertions or flexing its influence on bilateral matters unrelated to its own party. Juro Igresin reports from Seoul, South Korea. And coming up next after the break, let's update together on the banking situation in Myanmar. Stay tuned. Myanmar will not allow uh, permission for new private banks except for those branch offices which are jointly cooperating with the, gov the government, according to the Deputy Minister of Finance. Currently, there are many application forms by local entrepreneurs, including Myanmar Microfinance Bank and Housing Development Bank, to open new private banks. There are 20 local private banks being opened until the end of the year, uh, uh, according to a statement by the Central Bank of Myanmar. The Deputy Minister of Finance, Mung Mung Tian, said that we did not grant uh, for the opening of new private banks, except the government's new uh, the joint venture banks. The local private banks are Myanmar Citizens Bank, Cooperative Bank, Yada Napon Bank, private, the first private bank, Miyabudi Bank, Yangon City Bank, Yoma Bank, Myanmar Oriented Bank, Tan Foundation Bank, Kanbaza Bank, Asia Yangon Bank, and the Small and Medium Industrial Development Bank, to name a few. Among 20 private banks, Myanmar Livestock and Fishery Development Bank has already opened the most 109 branch offices. The private banks are preparing to launch their branch offices across the country, and they had expected to run over further 100 branch offices during this year. In the past, the government declared that any uh, private bank needs to keep 700 million jobs as a collateral fund. The policy has been changed since the beginning of this year. Due to the government's policy change, the private banks had won land rent permit, building lease permit, and permission for opening of their branch offices at supermarkets. 
Moreover, the government is now making financial plans and will allow more than one-year land rent permission to private banks that carry out their business tasks in real estate market for the development of business. The government will also grant loans as movable assets to be pawned. <clears throat> Officials media reported yesterday that three Myanmar Thai border checkpoints will be open to Thai nationals and orders foreign visitors for entry and exit as of August, aiming at providing better service to the visitors holding passport and Myanmar entry visa. According to the New Life of Myanmar, the three gates are des designated as Taki Lake Masai, Mewadi Masot, and Khao Tong Ranong under a Myanmar Thai border crossing agreement. The Ministry of Home Affairs was quoted as saying that visitors will be allowed to visit any place except restricted areas under security reason and to depart from any official exits. Categories of visa granted for tourists include entry visa, diplomatic visa, gratis official courtesy visa, Visa, tourist visa, business visa, transit visa, and multiple journey special re-entry visa. The report say that the move would help create greater job opportunities for trading, tourism, and hospitality sectors. According to Myanmar Tourism Statistics, in 2012, the number of tourist arrivals reached over 1 million people. And now in Wolverine, we're going to have a look at the Apai Pool Bed Hospital in Brajinburi, which is a traditional Thai alternative, providing a traditional Thai alternative medicine. Welcome to World Within, a program that will update everything you need to know about health from top to toes and from the inside through the outside. And for today's program, we're going to have a look at the traditional Thai medicine, which is for Thai people considered as another way or options for receive their medicinal treatment. And for today, that's why I'm here at the Apai Pool Bed Hospital or the traditional Thai medicinal hub, which is situated in Bratinburi province. This hospital is situated in the heart of Brajinburi province. The hospital is very well known for its traditional Thai alternative medicine using herbal therapeutic massage, acupuncture, herbs, medication and cosmetics. This is Zhao Pia Pai Phu Hospital. It's located in the eastern of Thailand. It's far from Bangkok, about 134 kilometers. It's located in the Brajinburi province. Chao Phya Pai Phu Bet have uh, many, many activities about the Thai traditional. Uh -huh. One is a uh, Thai traditional service. Two, two is a uh, Thai traditional training center. And three is a uh, knowledge management in Thai traditional medicine and herbal medicine. And we have a research develop development. And the, another one, we have about the herbal product development. Mm -hmm. And you know, at a recently, Ministry of Thai Public Health is a promote about the herbal medicine. Mm -hmm. We have a, we have a received the policy of uh, this. Project. And uh, we attempt to integrate about the basic knowledge of vessel medicine and uh, into the study of Thai. Yes, of Thai and practice to the Thai traditional medicine. Most patients who come here are categorized in two types, which are IPD patients or inpatient department and OPD patient or outpatient department. IPD patients are those who need to be looked after closely 
these patients will stay over at the hospital, while OPD patients are those who come to receive the treatment at the hospital and leave after their treatment is done. They will get prescribed medication from the doctor and will have to come back to follow up on their condition. Um, the inpatient, um, we have uh, integrated about the modern medicine combined with uh, Thai traditional medicine. Mm -hmm. We have uh, many, many programs about this patient. One program is a uh, Thai traditional massage yes. combined with um, Thai herbal medicine. And the other program is uh, modern medicine, rehabilitation, and the acupuncture in Chinese traditional medicine. The other is uh, meditation and uh, the exercise. Mm -hmm. In the outpatient, uh, the patient has a diagnosis and treatment um, by Thai traditional theory. And they have a Thai, Thai herbal medicine. And some patients have a Thai traditional massage to relieve the symptoms. So what are the differences between inpatients and outpatients over here? Um, the difference is uh, disease and uh, the symptom. It's uh, many symptom um, we advise to admit uh, because uh, we have uh, many programs to treat. If you would like to receive a treatment at the hospital, it is advised to call the hospital and make a reservation. Walk-in can be done as well, but since the hospital is quite busy, booking in advance is more preferable. And that's it for today and for next week's program, we're going to have a look at how the traditional Thai medicine is made. Till then, bye-bye, swadika. And that's it for the time we have for today. See you again same time, same place, same channel. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Wina Jong Prasit. And I am Nira Chamlai Saklami. Swadika. Swadika.